your federal partner is, while, while it's enough to make us important to you, and while we require certain things of you, because once you, once you accept that first dollar of federal money, then there's an awful lot of requirement and obligation that goes along with that. So we require a lot of you, sometimes for, for very small amounts of money. And I've, I've had a couple of you tell me that I'm fed up with the reporting that uh, we have to do to the federal government, and I would rather just stop taking federal dollars so that I don't have to fill out those stupid reports every month. Um, and kind of take that as an idle threat. I doubt it. <laughs> it is enough to make sure that um, you will at least pay attention to it. But we want to make sure that you understand we are your partner here to work with you. And we, um, we don't want to be seen as a top-down driver of policy change. In my mind, extension has always been, and I think this is where extension shines the best, is when it's a bottom-up organization. That the people who you work with, so families, youth, farmers, ranchers, uh, the people that you work with, when they have needs, you find a way to provide them with what they are looking for. And then you go to your state, and you can come to the federal government and try to find the resources to help do that. But I think if we drive things from the top down, from Washington, D.C., or actually Kansas City, um, it's probably not going to go very well. And so we need to find a way to work together so that we can be providing you what you are looking for. An early example of this is with 4-H. Uh, NIFA in the Waterfront Building in Washington, D.C. has always been known as the 4-H headquarters. We kind of symbolically took that sign down a couple weeks ago. We're also leaving the building, by the way. Uh, but uh, we took down that sign because we are the 4-H uh, family partner, not headquarters. And we do not want to be seen as the headquarters. So we've been working with Ed and Doug and national council members in 4-H pretty regularly to redefine that relationship so that we are not seen as that top-down process. So lots of things have happened. You know, some of them are are big and acknowledgement of how we make decisions. Some of them are small, like who gets to control the 4-H emblems? Um, who is the police for that? Um, we were, uh, we, are, we are not now. So those types of things are coming along. NIFA can help with these changes that we're talking about. Uh, we do have a lot of money. Our budget is about $1.7 billion. Well, that is much less than things like the National Science Foundation or the Department of Education that supports outreach. Uh, it's still a lot of money. So there are still many things that we can do to help, I was going to say help drive change, but that would be exactly the wrong word, to what we, can we do to help support the change that all of you may be looking for. So um, I would challenge all of you to be thinking about those changes that you think are appropriate, and then come to NIFA and look for that support to help make those changes possible. Uh, and Doug Steele and Ed Jones and I, we've already had some of these discussions about how we can support those types of programs as we are seen as a partner, not as the, uh, the headquarters for your programs. But we really need this. Again, we have a lot of money, and we need to spend that money in ways that are make the most impact on uh, the programs that we are here to support. So I would, we can ask you to be thinking about that. One of the things I'm going to do in NEPA, I, I did not want to get into the transition here because in the, the relocation of Kansas City, I'll be in some section meetings later on this morning where we can talk more about the details of that. Um, but. We, we are ourselves changing for a variety of reasons, and we can see a lot of different programs, obviously a lot of different people that you will be working with in NIFO. But as we go through these changes, we will be able to adopt new practices and adapt to the changing needs of our society. Now, this is a once, for all the consternation and all the arguing about is it a good idea, a bad idea. That's all, that's all politics. Uh, but what this really is, is a once in a lifetime opportunity to change a federal agency. Government, as I have learned, um, fortunately or unfortunately, does not change very well. 
Uh, you think universities are bad. Uh, universities are nimble ballet dancers compared to <laughs> federal government. <laughs> the federal government is the Titanic. I'm not saying there's an iceberg in front of us, but if there was, it's, it's going to run into the iceberg for sure. Um, we're going to need your help. And so again, I talked to Doug and Meg and um, Orlando, and mentioned this to Mark and others. We need your help to make sure that NIFA represents your needs, uh, particularly as you think about change for the future. We're there for you. We've got some of the purse strings, or we've got some of the money to help incentivize those changes. But we're going to need your help to support us in thinking about what the extension side of NIFA should look like in the future. So I challenge all of you just to begin thinking about this. And if you've got ideas, send them up through you know, APLU or through your, your associations. Uh, ultimately, we will have a, a mechanism to formally receive those ideas and incorporate them into a change management process that we're going to start later on next year, or early next year. Uh, this year, we're just we're just trying to get through the transition. The next three months are going to be awful for me. There's, there's no way around that. Uh, but we will get through this, and once we settle down, we uh, those that are moving to Kansas City will be there. Those that we need to hire, some of them, a lot of them will be there by that time. Uh, that's when we can start talking about some of these changes, but we need all of you to be a part of this. So that's my ending challenge to you. Be thinking about how NIFA can support change and extension. You know, there's no epiphany there. I don't have any of the answers other than to say we're partners in all of this. We need your help. We need our support as well. So let's work together and make sure that we're giving you what you need to do your job. So thanks very much. That's it. Feels like coming home today. I like uh, being back in the sound. Uh, anybody else make a move in the last year? I'm the only one moving. I guess that's from my resume, Dr. Nettle, where we're so wrong, long that I make a lot of moves here. But a move is a great time to reflect where you're at personally and professionally. Uh, we have four kids, as uh, Mark said, they're all grown now. A move is a great time to put all their stuff in a box and put their name on that box and <laughs> move that along. Uh, a move helps reflect on, on your past and where your career is taking you and what the future opportunities are. And uh, we are excited to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm not much on social media anymore, but if you're my wife's friend on Facebook, you can keep up with all of our adventures, and there are many of them. But my kids were growing up, we, we kind of had a family thing that once they got into sixth grade, they could pick one trip to go on with me and my family, and uh, my third child, Katie, picked to go to Washington, D.C. And so we went to D.C. and she said, I really want to see the president. And I said, well, that might be kind of hard to do. Let's go see where he lives. So we went to the White House and uh, had a stroller with us and had the three older kids walking around and saw the White House. And we started leaving and all of a sudden a police motorcade pulls up uh, on motorcycles and starts stopping all the traffic and putting these barricades out there. And the officer said, just everybody just please stand where you're at. And so we did that. I think this could get interesting. And so and we hung out there and... Uh, all of a sudden, here comes a motorcade. Now, I have learned that motorcades don't happen every day, but they're pretty frequent. And so we didn't know what to expect. You know, you don't know who it is. And so the first limousine came by, big black limousine with tinted windows. We just waved them like this. Somebody had to be something important. They got a motorcade, right? <laughs> the next one came by. The third one came by. And for whatever reason, the windows were not tinted. And in the very back seat of that limousine was Bill Clinton. And Bill, like it was scripted, I mean, President Clinton, excuse me, I'm not that close of friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> President Clinton, like it was scripted, looked at my daughter Katie and raised his Diet Coke can and gave her a nod. <laughs> and she turned to my wife and said, see, I told you we'd see the President. <laughs> I think my wife is more thrilled about that. We, uh, we really connect with a lot of the college interns that come there, and we, we always, when they get ready to head back to their campus, take them to celebrate kind of their success, their success as being an intern. And uh, we took some of uh, the interns out uh, for their farewell dinner to the summer group and uh, eating in a restaurant that uh, we enjoy that's close to the White House 
and all of a sudden here comes a motorcade, the lights and sirens, and my wife is sitting on the inside of the booth and climbed, literally climbed over me to get to the street to see who could that be. And I guess she still has that dream another president's gonna come by and wave at her. <laughs> I, I love the South because it's been an important part of my life and, and where I grew up and the majority of my extension career. And uh, I appreciate the leadership that comes out of the South. Uh, you're very unique when you come together as, a, as administrators and leadership team to, to have this conference and uh, I always enjoy participating in it. I also uh, want to thank the host because I don't take extra work on your behalf to have us here and, uh, and next year I must thank you guys for helping put this together because this is very unique to the South and it, you know uh, now that I represent the whole country I don't want to you know, show my biases but uh, I have a lot of affinity for what takes place and, and comes down the southern region and you truly are leaders uh, across the country and, and what we do in extension and we appreciate that. And before Dr. Angle has to step out and Scott, I agree if the secretary's called me at 930, I'll probably step out and take that call. So that's a, a great decision. Uh, <laughs> I want you to know for me that we're fortunate to have Dr. Angle in his role. Uh, Dr. Angle knows us well, he appreciates us, and uh, as he said earlier, he's never had an official extension appointment, but you will not find another director of NIFA that understands extension as well as Scott does. Uh, there are trying times in NIFA, and uh, we're trying to do the best we can to support it. And I know in Washington, D.C., there's a whole lot of fact checkers. In fact, there's people that make a living checking on different facts. And so I want to throw some numbers out there, but don't tweet them, because if you want the exact numbers, give me a couple of days, I'll give them to you. Uh, but Dr. Angle indicated the NIFA budget is about $1.7 billion, which would be not where we want it to be. Uh, but we've also had some pretty good gains the last couple of years that we continue to work on together. But what you may not know about the $1.7 billion is about $1.2 billion of that comes directly to our Langer University system through capacity funds and through the AFRI Competitive Research Program. And uh, AFRI is poised to make a pretty big jump this year. And uh, if it ends up around the 440 or 450, 85% of AFRI funding comes to Langer University. So those are not small numbers. And I appreciate Scott's philosophy that it really is a partnership. And uh, part of this partnership means when one of our partners goes through trying times, such as relocation to Kansas City, it's in our best interest to support that transition. And I know there's some Southern universities that took very, very strong stances against the move. They opposed the move. Uh, APOU, because of our member institutions, never opposed the move. Uh, what we said publicly is that we think that NIFA is better served being in Washington, D.C. But if you're not going to be in Washington, D.C., we want to uh, protect these four areas that are important to us and to uh, the extension family nationwide. And so uh, every indication is this move's happening. Uh, temporary space is there, positions are being announced there, people are moving there, and uh, it's going to be completed by the end of this fiscal year. And so it's time for us as Langer University to make sure NIF is su successful in transition because NIFA's success will be our success moving forward. And that, Scott, I think with your leadership, and, you, you know, it's been trying for Scott, it's been trying for a lot of people, it's been trying for, for, for NIF, for program officers and and people that are our friends and, and we consider family. And I would encourage you, if you know a program officer, even if they've chosen not to relocate, let them know we appreciate uh, their service that they've done in support of our labor universities. Uh, it's very critical moving forward. I wish I could stand before you and say I have the answer to what the future of what extension should look like. And I guess if we had the answers, we could adjourn and we could go enjoy some of the good food and restaurants and other activities here in the New Orleans area. Uh, but I don't have the answers. What I do understand though is if, if leadership is not thinking about it, it's not being thought about because we're ones that call upon to do that. And what I have learned over my almost 40 years career now is that it's not so much the end result, it's a process you use to get there. And I believe as leaders, we got to consider what that process is and what has helped us be successful in the past is going to help us be successful in the future. And I believe we need to understand that the time of strategic planning is well behind us because we all have strategic plans that are on the shelf in nice notebooks that have never been used to guide our thought process. And in fact, I don't even think a five-year strategic plan is that realistic anymore unless you have a rolling year on the back side so you can look at it every year if you're going to use it to guide decisions. I believe we're at a time now where we move from strategic planning to strategic thinking and action planning. 
because that's the difference we're going to make. And we know an extension that process that served us well in the past, I believe will serve us well in the future. So I wish I had a magic bullet I could share with you or a magic wand or something that could ease all of our problems moving forward. And Dr. Angle already shared with you some of the opportunities and challenges we're all going to face together. But I believe what is paramount for us as leaders is we come together and have these discussions. And then we do things that are going to benefit our individual states, our regions, and keep our country strong. I was very fortunate back in 2014 to be a co-chair of the Smith Lever Celebration uh, for the 100th anniversary of Extension. And what a great time to celebrate. What a great time to talk about that rich heritage, that past, that what we've done for this country. And in fact, as I thought about that, and I've shared many times in my comments, is that the Lane Grant University system is a very uniquely American idea. Out of the midst of the Civil War, even have the foresight to say, if our country is going to grow and prosper and be strong, we've got to have an educated populace. As Abraham Lincoln said, educate the sons and the daughters of the working class. 